Hey, my Martin here, and welcome to episode 5 of my advanced modding series. This episode will be about networking and the client and server relationship. And we'll be discussing how we're going to deal with the issues that will occur when we're dealing with this area. And we'll be using a main uh, goal for this, and this main goal will be a feature that will allow us to press a key on a keyboard or a specific key, a keybind and create an explosion when we do so. So, uh, as Palmer discussed keybindings already, I'm going to skip uh, showing that part and I'll be back when that's done. And I'm back, I've created a keybinding handler it's reasonably the same to how Parmar has done it. There is a, there are some differences though. The main difference being that I'm using a enum to describe all my keybinds. So I've got a enum entry for every keybind. This one's called explode, and we give it a name and we give it a default key. And you can see here in the constructor it will create a new uh, key binding and it will be registered with a default key binding category so if we look in Minecraft and go into controls we'll see a advanced mod entry and an explode uh, entry and this is the localized name of this string so if we go in our language file we can see that it has a key that categories dot advanced mod. So any string you put in here will be try to be localized automatically. And the same goes for the name. Um so yeah, and then I'm using the client proxy over here. We do register key binds and First of all, we're registering the, the handler that's processing all the keys. So this makes sure uh, that this lets FML know that there is a class here over here we want to uh, listen to keybinds to. And this will make sure that all our keybinds are getting registered and it just loops through all the enum entries and does a client registry that register keybind. Now in the keybind handler we are doing a get press key like Parma does, but we're returning null here because if we add a entry over here like uh, uh, none, you have to fill in, first of all you have to fill in some rubbish for this and then that isn't really a problem but when you're going to loop through all of the keys, so in here you're going to register a empty key, so that's... Uh, I don't think that's neat, so I prefer to do it that way and then we are just checking for null, for not null, and then we're going to check which key is being pressed. And is pressed, I've uh, I've checked for the key binding that is pressed. So when we do that, we can check if that works, it should do. And if you press G, that's what I bound it to, we can see boom at the bottom of the in the console over there. So that works fine. We can probably remap it and it will still work. H there you go, it still works. So now let's look at how we can make a an explosion. Um so we could look at how creepers explode, for example. That's how you do it all the time. I want to create an explosion, or I want to do X. How does Minecraft do it? And you just browse until you find your answer. So I'm in the Minecraft code over right here. And we're in the entity package. Uh, monster, I guess. Yeah, the creeper is a monster. 
So if we look through here, you can. Oh, there are sounds being played. If the time since ignited is longer than a fuse time, that probably sounds like some explosion thing. So if we look at this, we're going to see oh, create explosion. So in the world, there's a method called create explosion, and it's using this. I'm going. I'm going to explain it now. The the disk parameter, the the entity over here, is the entity that's doing the damage. So when you died by a creeper, by an explosion, if you specify an entity, you'll get in the death message the uh, creeper ex uh, exploded you, rather than just player exploded. And X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z of the creeper, and explosion radius, and this flag, if we look at this flag, this is the uh, whether or not it should do damage to blocks. So I've just deciphered what each of the parameters are doing by looking at how the creeper explodes. For some met methods it's harder, for, for others it's as easy as like we just did. So we were going to use the world.createExplosion and do that. So how are we going to get a world object and also how are we going to get the position where we want to blow up? I think it might be good for now to create an explosion 10 blocks under the player. So if we do that... Um, this is kind of bad practice, but because the client server thing I'm going to explain in like 10 minutes I think. Uh, but for now, to show you, um, when you're on the client, that doesn't say much yet, but uh, we're going to uh, to do that now, uh, or in a few. You can get the player, uh, the current player you're playing with, by doing Minecraft dot cat Minecraft the player, and you can do entity player player equals that. This gives you a player instance. So this is the entity of the player. And this is an object. So if you look at the entities, every entity we just looked at the creeper. Creeper extends entity mob, which ex extends entity creature, which extends entity living, living base, and which is an entity. And the same goes for, so every entity is an object. And the same goes for the player. Player extends entity living base, which extends entity. And every entity, yeah, you can look at that. Um, every entity has a X, Y, and Z you have access to. There's our whole public. And every entity has a world object you can access. So now we've got a player. I just said we have access to a world object by doing player dot world object. So we can do a create explosion. We can make the player the one that created explosion. So whenever you kill another player by exploding this, by pressing the boom key, <laughs> it will say um, this player uh, exploded another player. So x position that's player dot position x player dot position y player dot position z oh and we want to create an explosion ten blocks below the player so that's that now this is the explosion radius let's use the same as the creeper did if we look at that the explosion radius is three and that's being used over here. So when it's charged, it will be twice as high, explosion radius times 2. Or when it's not charged, it will just be 3. So we're doing the same as the creeper, and we want to destroy blocks, so yes. Oh, and it's, uh, the explosion radius is a float. 
So that's that, and as we are in debug mode, we can just... It, it should work already, so let's make it daytime. Time set zero. If we go into Minecraft and press G, or H, it's rebound to, it will create an explosion, so that works. First off, you'll notice that the sound is, the sound doesn't work, but eh, we can live with that. Uh, hmm, what's happening over here? It did explode. It created explosion particles, and we saw blocks breaking. But I'm glitching. It's like the block is still here, and if we create an explosion, a few more. You can notice that no items are being dropped. So, some really weird stuff is going on. Why is this happening? Maybe relogging will help? Uh, huh? Nothing has happened here. What's going on? So, what you're seeing over here is the client server relationship that isn't really correctly used. So, let's explain what's happened in, and how we should use the client and server relationship. So I've created a little PowerPoint to show you how this works, the client and server relationship. So, the best way to envision this is when you as a player log on a server of Minecraft. So there's one server and there are could be one client when you're alone on the server, or maybe more if you're with more people on the server. And the server is the boss. Server handles all the the blocks being placed, all the entities being spawned. It basically decides what's happening, and it ignores whatever the client tries to do when it isn't agreeing with the client when it tries to do. So you might have been kicked from the server when you were flying. That's because the server said, nope, that's not going to happen, you're not going to fly. That's the basic gist. Now, when you're playing single player, this still is the case. You might not uh, you might not really be able to envision it. it be, it's all in the same machine, so why would this be happening? But it's still happening. Uh, and before Minecraft 103.x, this wasn't the case. The, the, the client was just a client, but since 13x and up, they've split it, and this is called an integrated server now. And the reason for this is that there's only one code base to manage that way. If we're going to to this image over here, when you're looking with a client into onto a server, the client needs to have its own code, the server needs to have its own code, and okay, that's fine. But now, when you're in single player, you don't need to have the server part anymore. You can just have one instance running, basically. That's another entire instance you need to manage. So that's why they split it. But anyway, that's a little bit off topic, but I uh, just wanted to mention that. So, when you're dealing with, my, with the Minecraft code base, you always keep to, need to keep in mind that there are two threads running basically. There are two instances running at the same time through the code. And both need to be handled differently. Let's look at what the client needs to do. So it needs to render on your screen, it needs to degrade the sounds, and it needs to process the key and mouse input of the player, and it simulates the world as far as it can. So it tries to mimic what the server is going to do. Now these are a few examples and the rest I'm going to show also are just examples. So there might be more, uh, you just have to keep in mind that these are a few examples to show you the client-server concept. So the server is responsible for despawning or spawning creatures. Deciding what water it will be, the updating of entities, so the movement and AI and damaging of entities, 
Uh, so you can't really damage a player on the client side. That's happening on the server side. Also, the world is being saved. So the thing we saw happening when we created an explosion that was on the client. We processed the key. We created an explosion. We broke some blocks. We... Yeah. But when we relocked, the server didn't know that there was an explosion over there. So didn't know of anything. And it just saved the old world and it it came back to us. So the server's being the boss and it decides what's happening. So also explosions. So actually what we want to try to do is from the client tell the server that it needs to create an explosion. And hmm, there still needs to be something over here. We need to transmit information to the server. So we can we can draw a line over there. And in Minecraft itself, when you click a block and that kind of entities, when you click a block on an entity or a slot in a GUI and even more, it, the client will tell the server sort of that it did that. So that way the server can right click the block and switch a lever so that isn't happening on the client the client just says I'm going to right click that block and the server says ok you right click that block well let's switch the lever and then after it did that it will send a packet a so called packet back uh, saying that block has changed so for everything the client basically requests something and the server responds with something so just to get us straight, to resolve a problem we are going to first process the explode key, we've done that already. Then we're going to send a packet to the server saying that it needs to explode. And packets you can give more information uh, about, about uh, you can send integers and you can send doubles, you can send all primitive variables and you can do more. But for now, the server has enough with knowing which server, which uh, player has sent the packet, and we don't need to do anything for that. Uh, and then at the server, when it receives the packet, it needs to create the explosion. And then if we use the uh, world.create explosion, it will handle all the syncing back to the client, the, the code that makes it so that the client sees the blocks disappearing and the items on the ground and the particles being spawned and the damaging of the player that all being will be handled behind the wall dot create explosion. Last of all I'd like to mention that there's a good resource around that's uh, teaching you the base concepts of the Minecraft code base and that's the grey Minecraft code at the block spot. Um, it's a really good uh, resource that for example shows you everything that's being done every tick or the, the game loop basically so you can see for the client side what it's doing every tick and on the server side the same and there are a lot of topics he showed the, the concepts about and he also did block rendering and how rendering works there and there is a lot so it's a really good resource for getting a base concept on Minecraft code and this concludes part one of the networking tutorial next part we will be discussing how to implement the code that's needed to mm. network basically um, hope to see you around then and for now bye bye